welcome to today's lecture. Uh, this is continuation of the analysis of an axial piston swash plate type hydrostatic pump. Earlier we have learned uh, the pressure ripples, their features, also the what will be the input torque of the shaft and uh, volume displacement etcetera. In this lecture I shall discuss about uh, the valve configuration in a better way and thereby we also discuss about the pressure ripple and then one important aspect which is called swash plate torque. This means that the torque required to hold the swash plate in the position or in case of fixed displacement what are uh, what are the torque experienced by the swash plate. Now, uh, this is the axial piston pump which we are studying already I have described that uh, this is rotated uh, the pistons are laid in a barrel which is rotated by an input shaft and then this uh, the end of such pistons are with um, hydrostatic thrust bearing which is called slipper pad. This is uh, moving on the swash plate which is inclined for fixed displacement this inclination is fixed in case of uh, variable displacement this angle can be varied. Now, um, as um, the pressure changes during the rotation the suction and compression as well as in this valve there are also transition zone depending on that torque on the input shaft as well as the swash plate shaft they vary. So, while uh, we are changing the angle particularly in case of variable displacement or when this is being used for a fixed I mean um, constant displacement or some constant pressure, constant torque whatever may be the feature. In that case we need to control that swash plate torque. So, for that it is essential to know what the torque what is the torque acting on this swash plate at any instant. Now, this is the geometric configuration which already I have discussed between these two pistons which are equispaced uh, the angle is denoted by this one and this angle psi p is the valve angle total spread of the valve and the theta is the angle of rotation of the barrel that is rotation of the shaft. If we look from this side then this theta begins from the left hand axis the axis system is not shown here which already I have described in earlier lecture. Now, this is the typical leakage shown I mean uh, this typical figure for showing the leakage past the pistons. So, for that we need to consider the pressure, volume, then bulk modulus, density and also we should consider the area of the orifice, flow, pressure etcetera, etcetera. Now, <coughs> the valve which is called kidney port. So, this is, there is a valve plate which is not shown on the kidney port I mean on, on the valve these are the kidney port if we consider from here to here and if we consider here to in this directions one obviously one is for the suction one is the for compression or delivery 
suction and delivery input and output. Now, this here although it is shown apparently the cylindrical hole the other end of the barrel, but usually this end is with also another kidney port. This is kidney pattern it is written kidney pattern port. Now, the dimension the or the angular spread between these two kidney ports is such that the length of this will exactly fit on on this space. This means that momentarily there will be no flow in or out to a chamber to a piston and next moment it will go it will go inside the this kidney port may be suction or may be discharge. Now, <coughs> looking into this end say it is rotating like this then while it is entering whether it is uh, discharge or suction there is a groove is provided. The reason is that if it is exposed to this main port directly then rate of change of area is very fast and the pressure change in pressure in the fluid inside the piston uh, becomes very much transient. First thing second thing is that there is a there will be huge noise when it will if it is directly connected to this if this groove is not provided. Therefore, sometimes this groove is called silencing groove. Here is the geometry is shown what is the spread of this groove and this is the spread of kidney port on the barrel and this is the spread of this dead band it is you should call dead band known. Now, this is again in some design these are not exactly equispaced that means in one side it is less in other side it is more this also to reduce the dynamics because the barrel is moving the port is then uh, coming into contact coming into this kidney port contact the if it is made equal then due to the dynamics actual time maintenance will not be equal or in other words we, we can say that this for the optimum performance it is found that if one angle is less, made less and other angle made higher the performance is better where, where this angle may be equal to this angle or this angle is slightly larger slightly larger than this angle. If we make this is less than this angle then what will happen there will be direct connection from discharge to input that output to input or vice versa. So, immediate pressure drop will be there and um, it cannot be controlled huge leakage will be there. Now, <coughs> if we think of the port that silencing groove. Now, this is the main port on the valve plate and this you can say this is a uh, through hole through which the oil is going from one side and from other side it is going to the um, pipelines. Now, this silencing groove it may be a flat bottom and constant width. Now, when this this is the kidney port of the barrel when this move gradually on that initially opening will be less gradually it will increase and then finally, it will increase to the whole, whole port will be open to this main port. Okay. Now, it can be made simply like this which is say if we think of the manufacturing this can be made by a milling cutter, end mill cutter like that. 
Now, next one is the ramped bottom constant width. So, ramped bottom means this is an inclined bottom. If you look into this the how to calculate area, we will always consider this from this corner to this perpendicular area that is the minimum area open to this port. In this case also directly we instead of considering this area, we consider this area perpendicular direction what is the opening. That means, rather we have to consider the flow is going like this, we have to consider this diagonal. In this case you can see this is more effective, so it is gradually increasing. Now, in comparison to this we can have also it is like a pyramid. Okay. So, no this is flat bottom that means this area is increasing that gradually this is increasing this width is increasing however depth remain constant. Now, as you understand machining of such thing is very very difficult because here practically this is the vertex of a triangle and depth is like this probably um, I cannot think of machining with ordinary tools, but this is also explained that this can be used. But most common is that ramped bottom ramped width geometry that means this is inclined as well as this side is also increasing. I will show how to calculate the area one of that I will take an for an example and I will show that how the orifice area can be calculated. Now, this is you can now see these are the four possible configuration and uh, these are provided for the silencing groove. Now, earlier I have already discussed that the instantaneous rate of change of pressure in the ith piston chamber is given by these equations. I am not repeating this because earlier we have discussed. Here we consider the sign depending on that direction of flow can be determined. So, this is the pressure drop and this is the um, leakage characteristics k theta. So, this is of earlier lecture if you remember in lecture 19 we have discussed this. Now, <coughs> again I am continuing with a actual pump, actual pump means in this case we will consider the leakage and others to find out the pressure ripple. Now, the port area remains at a maximum constant when it is completely over the discharge or suction manifold that, that means when this port kidney port will come over this main port then it will be maximum. In the transition region the port area gradually increases to a maximum from 0 when the piston is entering into the manifold zone from the dead zone that is from the top dead center or bottom dead center. In case of pump the oil is being exposed to high working pressure and in case of motor the oil is being exposed to low pressure if the BDC and vice versa if it is from top dead center. That means, if we consider from it is bottom dead center then that means, in case of pump it is completely fulled, full with fluid. Now, then next moment it will be connected to a port in case of pump definitely it is a high pressure because it, it is going to discharge. In case of motor it will be the reverse. So, to understand this language you have to think in that way. Similarly, the port area gradually decreases to 0 from its maximum opening when the piston is leaving the manifold zone to the dead zone. Now, we in, in earlier analysis I have shown that we consider the flat bottom and ramped width geometry. This is just to show the variation uh, of the area 
but this is not practical as I told the machining of this might be problem. Now, at the beginning of the discharge manifold or suction manifolds, a silencing group is provided for, for which this is the area already I have discussed. And then uh, these are the angle uh, shown here, different angle uh, in earlier lecture I have already discussed. So, I am not repeating here. Now, <coughs> we are considering this area, I mean this kidney port pattern, this is the this one of this shape. Now, area when we are calculating, we are considering this area. Let the angle covered by the right end of the kidney port be theta. Okay. Also, the kidney port of the barrel is considered to be rectangular, kidney port of the barrel is considered to be rectangular. That means, there is slightly curved, but we will consider it is rectangular. That means, we will consider that this is an rectangle and this is a circle. This circle diameter will be width of this one and then length is from this center to this center. We will consider this actually it is curved. By simple geometric principle the following results are obtained. It is assumed that this angle is greater than this angle. Okay, we have assumed and we have assumed also this angle is equal to this angle and the a small variation for the uh, spread of this right hand side of this axis and left hand side of this axis is not considered in this analysis at all. Now, then what is the area we consider? We in this case as it is a flat bottom, in this case we consider whatever exposed of this area. Thus be becomes clearly this is the height and this is the base and half of that. Do you understand my point? In case of the flat bottom and ramped width, we simply consider the whatever area is opened here, not in this diagonal direction. Directly we consider this area is the orifice area. So, it is calculated like this which already I have described in earlier lecture. Now, the important factor is that what is the total opening from the barrel to the port that you can see that let the full area of the kidney port of the barrel is a k. Therefore, the variation of the port area of the ith chamber is given by the following relations. Now, when this angle that is the lapping of this one, we have considered now angle from this line this is the angle of rotation. Our actual angle of rotation we have considered theta, but while we are describing this area exposure, we have considered that this is the zero position means the tip of this is here. Now, this is increasing. So, when this tip is within this limit, then area is given by this one. This is A G is the area of the A G is the A G plus uh, A G O oh, A G is the total area of this angle. So, it is given by this is total area of the silencing groove the flat area. So, then when it is after completing this it is going inside then for that we may consider this is the 
area. So, this area is already exposed that means, this triangle is already exposed then a part of this area is going inside this kidney port. The width here is same this kidney port width and this kidney port width is same. So, this um, if you carefully just observe that these are the simple geometric calculations. Now, when it is further moving further that means, this angle this angle uh, is less than this and uh, no sorry this angle is greater than this and less than this then we find this area is completely this area plus a part of that has come over that and then for the condition when it is fully on this port then this is the total area. Yeah, for this this is the total area and this condition is that when it is just going out remember that in other end there is no silencing port. If it is rotating in this direction silencing port is always when it is entering other end there is no silencing port. So, this angle is the total spread of this kidney port. So, when it is crossing then the angle is given by this one. So, uh, my suggestion is that to calculate the angle and the calculate the area we should go through these equations and we need a practice otherwise we will not be able to find out what are the areas. These are simply geometric relations, but it needs practice. Okay. Then uh, the pump which we have considered here this is <coughs> I have already shown earlier, but we consider the bulk modulus is 10 to the power 9 Pascals and coefficient of discharge irrespective of the size of the orifices is 0.62, angular extent of the barrel orifice 30 degree and angular extent of the silencing groove is 11 degree, maximum opening area of the silencing groove is 2.25 10 to the power minus 5 meter square and maximum area of the each barrel port is 3.75. 10 to the power minus 4 meter square as you see this is smaller than uh, this. This is the if you consider the top of the silencing group this is the area. Remember we will consider A g as this area for the orifice when we take this flat bottom type for the uh, pyramid type that is ramped bottom and um, as well as uh, the uh, ramp opening for that we have to calculate such angle separately. I will show that. Now, leakage coefficient here we have considered k it I think it was given k theta there. So, we consider the leakage coefficient again when I was discussing about the leakage coefficient I was told that depending on the length of the stroke length of the opening this actually it would change, but if we find that stroke length is not very high because the swash plate angle for this pump is not very high in that case we may take for the analysis k is equal to constant where we have taken in this case. Now, source plate angle alpha is maximum 18 degree and nominal volume of single piston chamber is 22.83 into 10 to the power minus 6 meter cube very small and um, R is equal to that is radius is 5.501 uh, 10 to the power minus uh, 2 meter that is 55 millimeter and dp is 110 millimeter rotational speed of the barrel 
say at a nominal speed we have considered 235 radian per second density is 850 kg per meter cube and we have also considered this angle two angles are same and the delta that is the deviation of the both the side distribution those are 0. Now, with these values first of all we have this curve we have plot that is following the equation this is ideal the geometric displacement. Now, what we have taken the number with the same diameter we have taken number of piston is 9 piston you see p diameter of the piston is same, but we have taken this uh, radius d p in such a way that stroke length is varying a stroke length is different for 7 chamber, 8 chamber and 9 chambers. So, that total flow that is swept volume remains same for a same inclination. Okay. So, that is why you see this if you take the average through this that will be same. But if you think about the ripple in case of 7 the blue is 7 chambers. Now, if we go for 9 then this ripple is reduced than 7, but in between that if you go for 8 ripple will be more. You can examine from this equation as well as from our the flow ripple analysis which we have done by the phasor analysis. It can be seen that from the analysis of the ideal case flow the pump with even number of pistons has larger pulse time period and also larger amplitude than the odd number counterpart. As you have discussed earlier with phasor analysis such ripples are undesirable due to the resulting large fluctuation and noise. Now, in this analysis what we have considered we have considered the variation of area while we are calculating this flow pressure etcetera. Now, these are the data shown and what we find the valve float area for the flow in out is varying in this way. So, this this variation due to the um, we can say that silencing groove uh, and other end there is no groove. So, it is a straight forward. So, um, this is a sample calculations we have uh, just calculated what are the areas and as you find for when the full kidney port is coming on the main ports the full opening is there. So, this area is you can compare with the area of the barrel kidney port. Okay. So, these are the area and then we <coughs> plotted the pressure. Hmm. Now, this is for the Now, this is this as at the valve entry and this is the exit. Now, as you see that as uh, this area just from the dead zone when this area is started opening momentarily there is a pressure rise. That means, when the piston is coming on the it is fooled and it is pressure uh, in case of pump it is in the delivery side and it is in the dead zone there will be momentary rise of this pressure. This depends on the uh, area it, it is opening uh, or in other words I would say that depending of different port you will find that this pressure rise will be different. However, if we provide that the delta has some value you will find 
there will be more pressure fluctuation there. So, then the question is that why we provide that? We will find that overall losses and overall performance will increase, although there may have a spike. But this actually I would say this calculations is done on the basis that apparently when it has reached um, the dead zone, uh, the initial opening of the orifice for a small angle, we have taken a small angle and area is too small, but in reality this pressure rise may not be there, this will be truncated. Now, here I have described that why this pressure rise which I have already told. Now, initially I have shown the what what will be the flow rate, but if we consider the leakage, if we consider the pressure fluctuation with all such considerations your actual ripple may come like this. Experimentally it is also shown that it is not a smooth curve, there will be fluctuation like this. So, this is of course, not the experimental on considering uh, this curve is drawn on the basis of considering the leakages, considering the pressure rise, considering the uh, change in area when the port uh, is opening and closing and uh, this will be the theoretical curve. This may not match with experimental curve because in experiment uh, while we are conducting the experiments there are some more unknown factors which may not be considered in theoretical analysis. Now, pressure in transient region, in this case to analyze the pressure, what will be the pressure variation while a piston moving from 0 degree to 360 degree that we will analyze first, then that pressure is considered for the further analysis of the flow pressure etcetera. Now, in this case we have considered this V angle is 90 degree that means, if we consider this groove silencing groove this is the we have considered the V shaped that means, this is ramped in this direction as well as ramped in this directions. Now, this angle is 90 degree that means, this angle is considered 90 degree. Okay. Now, for that if you look into this geometry then this altitude will become this angle. Now, what the orifice area and its relation to the angular position theta is given by this angle, where in this case again we have considered the theta angle with respect to the valve rotation. So, this angle is considered as a total angle theta minus theta 1. So, this means that from a reference point the position of this tip is theta 1 and our total rotation is theta. So, when we know this theta and we know this positions we will use this angle whereas, this angle is the angle of inclination which is not shown okay? angle of inclination. Um, that means, this angle with respect to the surface this angle is gamma. Now, therefore, this area is can be calculated simply using this equation. So, this is the 
height and as it is 90 degree this is the base half base if we consider this side. So, this is the area of one side and multiplied by the by 2 will give the total area. Now, look at this in this case we are considering this area as the orifice not the surface area in case of this configuration of the silencing groove we have to calculate in this way. Now, the area is can in this case can easily be calculated we do not consider the area of the valve kid uh, barrel port. Okay. So, now we substitute this into the earlier equation this was the earlier equation what we used. So, to find out the flow q 1 1 so, here is the gamma angle is shown this is the gamma angle that means this angle is the gamma. Now, let it, let us calculate the force we will now consider the first plate torque. We uh, now we consider here is the pressure. So, we consider a force a p along the pistons this is simply the pressure into the area of the piston. Okay. A p is the cross sectional area of the piston. Now, what will be this force reaction force offered by this first plate this will be definitely f p n divided by cos alpha p n is the n is the nth piston. So, for the nth piston this will be the force when we are calculating the force of a pistons then we consider that particular position of the piston and the pressure the instantaneous pressure at the piston. So, this is simply why this is we have divided by the cos alpha because force acting in this directions. So, definitely in this direction the force is opposite to this to generate I mean to offer that much resistance in this directions the inclined pla plate has to offer this much force which is the which we have to find by dividing by cos alpha this is from the simple geometry and force analysis. Now, so this already I have described so this much force is acting over there then torque arm this is the torque arm that means we are calculating the torque about this point. So, we have to consider this force and this arm length to find out the torque about this point. Okay. Now, here one interesting point is that we have considered that this pivot point of this first plate not intersecting the axis of the barrel shaft or axis of the input shaft in case of pump output shaft in case of hydraulic motor. Now, this eccentricity if the if it is asked why this eccentricity is provided again I would say with this very small eccentricity it has been found that pump performance or motor performance improve for some cases not all cases due to some range of the operations this eccentricity is beneficial that is why here the eccentricity is shown while we are calculating this arm we have considered the eccentricity, but in our final calculation we have neglected that that means we have considered E is equal to 0. So, R s can 
easily be calculated this is r sin theta if this is r then sin component this is r so this is sin component of that then a this is the length of the actually i would say that here although shown it is shown uh, no it is right we have to consider this length from this pivot uh, from this center of this ball joint this is the separate pad so this is a ball joint from here to the pivot point this length is a so we have to take this component also then this length e divided by cos alpha is this r we consider this length we consider this length and then this length divided by cos of swash plate inclination give us, us the torque arm so we combine the earlier equations and these equations and we finally get this is the ti in this case again uh, we have considered ith ith chamber not the n n was for the force analysis sorry this is a mistake we could have considered there also ith chambers so this is only for one pistons okay one piston this will be the torque now similarly we have to consider all the pistons and here instead of this force we directly we are considering the instantaneous pressure and the area of the pistons so this is in more general form now in general the pivot axis intersects the barrel that is the shaft axis and e is equal to 0 however in some cases the small amount of eccentricity for overall performance now next phase we have to consider the pressure distribution at different zone system pressure p2 along the discharge port of the valve plate this is p2 is the system pressure so this is the p2 region so when it this is the delivery side this is the delivery side that means first plate is inclined in this way this is coming out of the screen this is going inside the in and so that while the piston is moving from this point to this point it is gradually it is being compressed so this is the high pressure zone region then p1 along the suction port so this is the low pressure zone next the transition region between the discharge p2 and the suction p1 in case of pump the pressure at region will reduce from p2 to p1 and is termed as pc1 so this is the pc1 region only this region then next page we consider that this is the p c 2 region where the pressure is gradually increasing so in equation while we are calculating the pressure each for each and every piston when they passing through this region we have to carefully consider that pressure that means while we are calculating for a particular pistons we have to consider what are the pressure there some pistons have a p p1 some piston is having p2 some piston having pc1 some piston is having pc2 so while we are calculating the swash plate torque all for all pistons we have to calculate separately and they we have to sum up them so therefore uh, precisely at various values of theta 1 the acting pressure p1 will have different values as shown like this we can now we can divide into different zones and we can 
write it down what are the pressures over there. What I have described here this is written in the equation from here. Then in addition to the pressure forces transmitted by the pistons to the swash plate, the swash plate exerts inertia force on pistons causing them to reciprocate. Do you understand my point? So, this pressure force are there as well as there is a inertia force for the pistons. So, that is to be considered for the particularly for the transient regions while we are thinking the control of swash plate torque by the, the what are the actuation system we have to control this torque to keep the swash plate in a position or to move the swash plate from one position to other positions. So, we consider this force first of all we calculate the longitudinal displacement of the piston ith pistons. Then this you can calculate look at this it is rotating like this. So, first of all we will consider say this is the theta angle we will consider that this is r and then this is the sin theta then this is inclined. So, we consider the tan component of that. So, this becomes we are calculating while we are calculating this first plate torque we have to calculate this height perpendicular height this becomes first this value and then with the tan alpha we get the real vertical uh, this uh, torque arm positions from this pivot point. Look at this we have here also neglected the E there is no eccentricity. Now, the velocity of the ith pistons then if we differentiate with respect to time it gives this value and as well the accelerations we find we can calculate further differentiating with respect to the time right. So, therefore, the inertia force of the ith pistons is expressed by this equation this is the acceleration term and this is the mass of the pistons. Okay. Now, adding this force component to the expression the earlier expression the combined torque that is swash plate control of for the ith piston is given by this expression. Okay. It is acting over here this is only for ith piston. Okay. Now, this reciprocating group of the pump includes a holding plate which holds the piston shoes against the swash plate. Now, actually here say if we consider the how these pistons are moving forward motion is possible because this is rubbing on that, but there is no physical connection between these two only this is the if the compression force is there then it will move. So, while it is moving in the other directions how this will be pulled out actually there is a plate which is sometimes called uh, retainer plate that retainer plate is held by a spring here against the barrel. So, this always keep this super pad in touch in contact with the swash plate. Now, we must consider the dynamics or uh, the inertia of this retainer plate also. Now, while we are considering this accounting for the inertia of the plate relative to the swash plate pivot adds another torque THP component expressed as follows. This is, is equal to we can that moment of inertia and R omega square 
T alpha. The derivation is not shown, but as if we have considered the mass of that and this is acting at a, if we consider that this is the polar, polar moment of inertia, this is radius of gyrations and omega, omega square tan alpha will give us the that torque. Now, we add this torque with also the original torque what we have calculated. So, now the summation of this that is the for each piston inertia plus the pressure force torque due to this part plus the torque due to the retainer plate. So, this is precisely the equation for the torque of controlling or holding the swash plate in a position or to rotate the swash plate at an instant. So, uh, these are the reference I, I suggest that you should read uh, this paper uh, 1 particularly uh, 1 and then 4. But if you would like to know the details about the dynamics you should also follow these two papers. If you look into this, this was published uh, may be in the same year, but uh, in uh, in other issues I make it both no this is this was published in ASME, this was in other journal, but uh, first they found out this uh, nominal torque and then they did the dynamic analysis. Whereas, to know the kinematics details you should read this paper. Okay, thank you.